Atlanta's newest movie talk show. We'll be reviewing the, the newest movies coming out as well as uh, keeping you in touch with the film industry here in Georgia. I'm Steve Marcos. I'll be your host for the next 30 minutes along with Aaron Siegel, who's with me each and every week. How are you doing tonight, Aaron? I'm doing okay, Steve. How are you doing? Ready for the show tonight? I'm ready, too. All right. And we like, I'd like to inform you the reason that we are a film talk show. Not only do we get to talk, but you get to talk, too. We're live. Call us at 873-6713. Uh, if you have any comments about reviews, movies you'd like us to talk about, uh, excuse me, movies you'd like us to talk about, or we have a guest who's always in the film industry, and you can call up and ask him questions, maybe how you can get a star. Uh, right now, we'll, let's give a rundown of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be uh, reviewing films tonight. What do we got for him today? We've got Mr. Baseball, and we've got Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. All right, we'll be taking a look at those. Uh, film uh, critics' choice this week, since we're reviewing Mr. Baseball, the Braves are up 2 to nothing in the National League Championship Series. We're going to be doing baseball movies this week. I'll be telling you my favorite three. Aaron will be telling you his favorite three. And then right after that, we've got a very special guest tonight. Uh, Aaron, again, has rounded him up. So, Aaron, what's, who is he? What's he do? And why should people stay in, to, stay in tune? Well, we have Rob Walton of Creative Loafing. He's a local film reviewer, and he's uh, been talking with several people in the film industry, and I thought it would be a good idea to have him on. All right, that sounds good. We got a lot to cover here, so why don't we get started with our film review? Uh, what do you want to start with? Uh, why don't we start with Glenn Gary Glenn Ross? Sounds good to me, Aaron. You take it away. Okay, Glenn Gary Glenn Ross is the is the story of uh, several different salesmen. Uh, it's directed by James Foley. You might remember him. He did Reckless and at Close Range, and also did The Bomb. Who's that girl for Madonna? Um, and Glenn Gary Glenn Ross is adapted from the stage play uh, by David Mamet. David Mamet also wrote uh, the screenplays for uh, About Last Night and uh, House of Games. Now, Glenn Gary Glenn Ross stars Jack Lemmon, Al Pacino, uh, Alan Arkin, Alec Baldwin, and Ed Harris. Uh, the film deals with a bunch of salesmen that are given the ultimatum, either sell or, or, or get fired. The, uh, the first prize for the top salesman is a uh, is a brand new car. The second prize is a set of steak knives, and the rest of the salesmen are going to get fired if they if they don't perform well. It's uh, it's very well done, and uh, I'd like to go ahead and uh, go to the clip now. John, huh? Bad luck. That's all it was. I pray in your life you never find that it runs in streaks. Oh boy, that's what it's doing. That's all it does. Streaks. I pray that it misses you, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the sheets. Look at the sheets. 1987, 88, 89, six months in 89. Who's on top? Roma. Well, under here. Moss. Oh, boom. On April to September, it's me. It's no f boss. Hey, due respect, he's an order taker. Oh, talk. Oh, talk's a good game, but don't look on the board. It's me. Not lately, it isn't. Not late. Well, lately, it's my... Lately. Look, you call Murray and you call Mitch. When we were on Peterson, who do you think bought the new car, huh? Call Mitch, the Seville. Oh, he came in here. You bought that for me, fella. And out of what? Hey, look at me. Out of what? Nothing. Cold calling. You want to talk about a sale? You are really beginning to burn my ass, kid. I did get a lead. You. It was skill, John. It could be working for you. You want to throw it away? It isn't me. Oh, it's not you. Gee, I wonder who it is. Who is it? Who the talking to now look i need the lease to sell. after the I contest need... after the 30th there's a contest if i'm not up on that board by the 30th they're going to can my ass i need those leads and i need them now or i'm out so uh, that clip involves jack lemon and kevin spacey as office manager and uh uh, I actually, I thought the film was very well done. It, well done? Well done. It was, uh, it was beautifully acted. There was some good acting in it. I'll have to give it that. Uh, however, I felt this was the biggest waste of time I've ever spent at a movie in my life. I mean, I've never seen a movie where nothing was accomplished like this movie was. Nothing. This is, this is a, a classic tragedy. <laughs> but I must have missed it, man. I don't, I don't know. The, the film, uh, I see Academy Award nominations for several of the performers in the film. Al Pacino, Jack Lemmon. Yeah, there was and, good uh, acting. And Alec Baldwin is a supporting role as well. Yeah. Well, 
What about, I mean, the fact that the movie went on, I mean, for one hour, I timed it, one hour, two, two ideas were progressed here. Number one, the salesman couldn't get the right leads to sell the job. Right. And number two, then they decided they were going to steal the leads and sell them the good leads that were being kept from them and sold to someone else. That went on for one hour. What I just said in five seconds went on for one hour. Right, but you also get into the in-depth feelings of how these salesmen feel, I didn't how, they, how they react to, to what's going on. I, I, saw, I saw Ed Harris, every time he was on, he was complaining. Complaining, complaining, we don't get the leads, we don't get the leads, we don't get the leads, we don't get the leads for an well, hour. I mean, that's because it's real life. <laughs> they could have... They could have said, you ever heard someone complain, 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 and you finally want to just say, just shut the hell up. That's what I wanted in this movie. I wanted to tell this movie, just shut the hell up. You know, I got sick of hearing these guys complain for an hour before anything yeah. happened. What I can say about this film is, is that it, it's well acted. It was adapted from the stage play, and it's done, it's done very well. The, the script is done, it's an excellent script, and I see Academy Award nominations for, for several of the performers in the film. Like I said, the, the actors were good, but... Just boring. This thing was about as exciting as watching grass grow. <laughs> to tell you the truth, man, I cannot recommend this movie for anybody. Well, I, I'd recommend it to the, the uh, film people that, that really want to see uh, good actors. Good because actors. it was really done well. All right. Okay. Oh. Uh, well, what do you give it for stars? You go first, Aaron. I'll give it three stars. Three stars for Aaron. Okay. All right, let me wrap up again. Like I said, I can't recommend this to anybody. This is one of those movies that if you've done something bad, maybe they'll send you two to see. And this was just a horrible movie, great acting. I'll give it a half of a star just because it did have some good acting, but it's not very entertaining. In fact, six people were there in the theater. When I was there, two of them got up and left. I would have been with them if I didn't have to watch the thing. All right. Okay. On to Mr. Baseball. On to Mr. Baseball. All right. Mr. Baseball is the uh, story of an American player, Tom Selleck, who's on his downside of his career. And he's about to get traded to a Japanese team. Uh, basically, this film gives you a little inside, insight into what it's like to play in Japan. And uh, most of the, most of the uh, comedy comes from the culture clash between the American and the Japanese uh, coach and the American Tom Selleck. Uh, let's take a look at a clip right here. There's not much of the story. It's a pretty easy story. Uh, this clip here shows where uh, the uh, coach has told Tom Selleck to bunt, and he has a little disagreement with him on it. Let's roll that clip. You don't pay me to bunt. What? What? that clip. Before we start, let's lay a little groundwork for reviewing a sports movie. I think there's like three criteria. A, uh, a hero or a uh, underdog that someone can relate to, a good story, and believable baseball action. So why don't we maybe look at it on those points. Okay, as, far as, under, as far as an underdog, what do you think? Uh, I think he was an underdog. He was down on his luck. He'd been, just been traded to Japan because no, nobody else in the American or National League wanted him. So you felt for him. Yes, I did. Yeah. I didn't feel for him at all because knowing the game, I think what the filmmakers thought was they can put an American over in Japan and, and not take any of their crap, and the American people are going to love this. However, anybody that knows the game of ball, I don't care if it's in Japan, uh, here, or Timbuktu, you've got to listen to the coach. And it, this player offended me to tell the coach off to not do what he says. really offended me, and I didn't see – I was against the guy, to tell you the truth. I well, didn't find him an underdog at all. Well, see, I found him an underdog simply because he was uh, against – uh, everything. He did not want to change because he had been used to it in, in the so United were, States. So you were looking more towards the American versus the, Jap the Japanese, getting back at him for buying out everything here in the U.S. Right. Kind of thing. All right. What about story? Uh, the story uh, was very similar to a, to a film that came out a couple of years ago called Gung Ho with mm -hmm. uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah, I didn't see that one. Uh, that was about uh, the Japanese coming to um, the United States and uh, uh, buying a car company and uh, the uh, Americans refusing to uh, adapt to the Japanese uh, ways. And such. Yeah. To me, the, the story 
what it lacked was uh, it, the only the only redeeming characteristic of this was that it gave me some insight into baseball, into baseball in Japan. Mm -hmm. But I found myself saying, "This is a Hollywood movie. How much is this is Hollywood fluff, and what's real?" I almost wanted to call up Bob Horner or Cecil Fielder and, and say, "You know, Cecil, is this the way it really is, <laughs> or, is this, or is this just Hollywood dramatization?" I think what would have been best for the whole movie is to scrap the whole thing, hire your top-rate uh, uh, documentary feature filmmaker, and go over there and make a real movie, a two-hour full-length documentary on playing ball in, in Japan. But there are very few people that want to go see a documentary. They wanted, uh, well, How many people want to see this movie here? Uh, I don't know. It's a fun movie. It's, it's anecdotes about baseball, and, and, and uh, it's, it's a film that you can see in your, your leisure time. If you're a baseball fan, it's got you interested in it. It, it's, you know, yeah. I just don't see the story crossing over to anybody but baseball, people who like baseball. I can't imagine the people that don't like baseball doing it. All right, real quick, a baseball action, as far as believable. Guy looked like he could hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah Tom Seller can play ball. He can hit. It had some good believable action in there. Yeah. Uh, again, you go ahead with your stars. And I'm going to give it three stars. Out. Three stars. And All right, again, I felt there's no uh, underdog. There's no story worth me watching. I can't recommend this for anybody Except for people that like baseball, and I even have a hard time recommending it for them. I'd say if you really want to see it after what you've read in the paper or seen us talk about, wait till video or wait till the Buck movie. Get your whole uh, softball team over there pitching a quarter each. Maybe for that, I'll give it one star. Okay. All righty. Now, well, we're going on to the box office top ten. Okay. We're going to take a look at the Atlanta Metro, the Metro Atlanta area box office top ten for this week. And we've got a little change for you. We're going to start at number 10 this week and go uh, up to number 1. So we'll start with number 10, which is Serafina. And uh, that debuted last week at number 6 and drops to number 10 this week. And number 9 is Mr. Saturday Night. That's with Billy Crystal. And it falls from number 4 to number 9. We reviewed that last yeah, week. Nationally, that is uh, six place. Okay. I looked this up, so we'll give you a little more information how you compare nationally. Okay. Number eight is singles. That's with Bridget Fonda and Matt mm -hmm. Dillon. Yeah. After two weeks in the top five, it drops to number eight. And that's ninth nationally. I finally saw that. This is reminding me a little bit of the Woody Allen movie, Husbands and Wives. Oh, okay. In fact, it may be Woody's movie if he was 30 years old, but I think they were too concerned about telling what it was like to be single instead of really developing a story. And uh, just to give it some stars, I give it two and a half stars. It's one of those movies where you go and you're disappointed when you leave, but it kind of grows right. on you the more you think of it. It's a cute story. Okay, number seven is Hellraiser 3. That, uh, that dropped out of the top ten last week, and it's back in the top ten. And nationally, it is not, well, nowhere to be seen. Uh, I, gave it, <laughs> I, gave, I gave it two stars because it's just, it's a, it's a fun, um, uh, I guess. Fun uh, movie for the people that like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, blood and guts horror. Yeah. Uh, number six is Captain Ron. It falls from number three. Uh, number five is Hero, and we re reviewed that last week and gave it a total of three and a half stars. Mm -hmm. And uh, nationally, that was four. Right. I guess this was its debut week, then, right? Right. right. Number four is Sneakers. We reviewed that our first week, and that we gave that three and a half stars. Mm -hmm. It's in its fourth week. It's in a uh, top five. It was second last week. And as far as the top ten uh, movies nationally, this is the biggest grossing movie currently, Sneakers. Number three is Mighty Ducks. That's the Emilio Estevez hockey movie. Kids hockey movie. Yeah, and uh, that uh, breaks in at number three. Uh, number two is Mr. Baseball, and we just reviewed that. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of mixed reviews on that one. Right. Number one is Last of the Mohicans. That's with Daniel Day-Lewis. Mm -hmm. And it's number one for the second week in a row. And nationally number one as well for two weeks in a row. People love the movie. Good for talking. Michael Mann, the director. Sure does. All right, now, I guess when we come back. All right, Critics' Choice. Uh, like I said, this week we'll be doing baseball movies since we got playoff fever here in Atlanta and with Mr. Baseball just coming out. We're going to tell you our top three. I'll let Aaron start off. Okay, I'm going to start out with my, my top three baseball movies. Number one is the 1942 classic directed by Sam Wood called Pride of the Yankees. It stars Gary Cooper as Lou Gehrig and uh, has uh, appearances by Babe Ruth as well. This is a must-see film. If you, if you like baseball... And, and you want to know a little bit about the sport, and whatever else, uh, you need to see Pride of the Yankees. I also want to mention that, uh, that they had to flop the film around to do this, uh, to do the, the batting sequences, because Lou Gehrig was a left-handed player, and Jerry Cooper was a right-handed player, so they had the numbers and everything reversed. Number two on my uh, top three is Field of Dreams. 
That came out in 1989. It was directed by Phil Alden Robinson, the same one that did uh, Sneakers just a couple of weeks back. Um, Field of Dreams is a baseball fantasy type movie. It uh, stars Kevin Costner and Amy Madigan. Number three on my list is The Natural. It came out in 1984 and stars Robert Redford and was directed by Barry Levinson. The film is well done. It uh, it's, uh, stars Robert Redford as Kim Basinger uh, as well. And uh, it's, a, it's quite an interesting uh, good versus evil type of movie. I'd also like to, to give honorable mentions to a couple of films. Uh, League of Their Own and Babe, the Babe that came out this year, are uh, decent baseball films. Uh, also, you might want to check out uh, The Bad News Bears uh, and The Bad News Bears and Breaking Training. But stay away from Damn Yankees, that's the musical, which really has nothing to offer anybody, and The Bad News Bears in Japan. Uh, those are definitely two turkeys that you might want to leave on the video shelves. And that's it for my baseball movie. All right, well, now I'll give you mine. All right, number one to me, 1976 Bad News Bears with Walter Matthau and Tatum O'Neill. To me, I played Little League ball, and this hits, hits home just about on all the points. Everyone can relate to this movie. You don't just have to love baseball. It has a true underdog as well. Uh, you got a, you know, uh, uh, Walter Matthau is a treasure as the drinking coach, uh, Coach Buttermaker, or as some of the players call him, Coach Boilermaker. Uh, it has all the three elements, underdogs, a good story. The greatest thing about this story, it's not cliché. You never know what's going to happen. You think the kid that never got the hit is going to get the hit. Hey, it doesn't always go that way. And that was the, what I really liked about the film. A great comedy, and like I said, you don't have to play baseball to relate to this. One of the top uh, films of 76 and probably of the decade. And it spawned two uh, forgettable uh, sequels. I didn't really care for the, the sequels as Aaron did, and a forgettable television show. All right, uh, my second is Eight Men Out, which is a uh, 19, it's about the 1919 White Sox that threw the World Series. It's really a story about what happened, kind of like a docudrama sort. Uh, it, it really captures the flair of baseball in 1919. You got a nice jazz soundtrack whenever people are playing ball. Uh, a lot of the characters you grew up know, Shoeless Joe, Ur, uh, Buck Weaver, Eddie Seacott, they all come to life with a great uh, cast as well, like uh, Charlie Sheen. John Cusack, D.B. Sweeney playing Shoeless Joe. Uh, one criticism I have of the film is that uh, when they do throw the game, some of the baseball action, they make it look so fake and so obvious they're throwing the game, you ha find it hard to believe it took a year for this to come out. And I went back and read the 1919 New York Times and read the, uh, re the write-ups on the baseball, and there was no indication that someone was throwing the game. So that was the only criticism, but it's a good story and tells you a lot about it. And uh, number three, Pride of the Yankees, as well as, as what uh, Aaron said, nominated for just about all major awards. Uh, Jerry Cooper is nominated for Best Actress, Teresa Wright, Best Actress. Uh, she was also nominated for Best Actress for, for Mrs. Miniver and won that, so two no nominations in one year. But one thing I liked about uh, Pride of the Yankees, again, it's a story of Lou Gehrig, so it's not a story with a true underdog because you know what's going to happen. There's no plot twist or anything like that. But what I really loved is I didn't know that Babe Ruth was in it playing himself. And I thought that was great. He has about a half dozen scenes, and he's actually a fairly decent actor. You get to see him bat and everything. And I really enjoyed uh, seeing the Babe. Those are the three I'd say to check out. All right. Okay. Now we're going to do – oh, we got a phone call. How about it? All right. Let's okay. Take, we're going to uh, take this phone call. Someone grab that phone there, and we'll go to the phone. All right, caller, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, I got a question for you. All right. okay. It's a little bit off the wall and everything, but uh, I've always wondered why they never came up to another sequel to the Star Wars series, and I wonder what y'all's opinions on why they didn't. And if they did, do you think it'd be a top-selling movie if one was to come out now, ten years later? Okay, You're talking about another uh, trilogy. There, there is. They have already, uh, they've uh, already started production. Uh, the first trilogy was Star Wars, and uh, from what I understand, they're they're uh, planning to make. The first three movies, Star Wars starts out as episode four, so they're going to start episode one and episode two, uh, I believe, um, towards the end of this year. Yeah. Well, originally, I think George Lucas and them just got sick of making them and wanted to get out of them for a while. Right, but uh, they, they have uh, started production and uh, production design is on the George and uh, them going to be back involved in this? Yes, it, it is George Lucas. I guess they're looking for the money. So you got your answer. It'll probably be a hit, no doubt. It's as good as the other three. Uh, should be a good movie. Thank you, caller. Yeah. All right, let's go to the uh, video releases that are coming out this week. Let's roll that up there.
October 1st, which was about a week ago, I guess my cousin Vinny came out. October 7th, which is, what's today? Today is the 7th. 7th. All right, coming out today, you got Gladiator, which I know nothing about. Uh, and uh, what's the other one there? Straight Talk, which is also coming out. That's the Dolly Parton movie where yeah, she yeah. plays a, a talk show host on, a, on radio. All right. And uh, they'll both be coming out today. And check them out. Okay. Let's come on back to the stage here, guys. Back at the booth. Hello. Hello, back in the booth. <laughs> there we are. There we go. All right. Okay. Each and every week here on Film Forum, we have a special guest involved in the film industry in one way or another. And tonight is no different. We have Rob Walton of Creative Loafing Magazine. Rob is a film reviewer and has been in the business for quite a long time. And what we'd like to do is just uh, welcome Rob to the show. Welcome in, Rob. How are you doing? How are you doing? Steve. This is Steve. All right. Hi. Oh, we just happened to bring uh, Creative Loafing with us. And we wanted to start out with the questions with asking you how you got started uh, reviewing films. Well, I majored in film at Penn State University. I had an equal emphasis in film production and then theory and criticism. When I graduated, I went, well, I, when I was still at school, I worked at the college newspaper doing film reviews. And when I graduated, I tried to get a job at Creative Loafing, and they said that they weren't hiring, actively hiring. And I kept petitioning them and saying, why don't you let me write something on your spec? And uh, if, if you like it, you use it. If you don't, fine, it's just a waste of my time. So I wrote an article. They liked it. It wasn't film related, though. And uh, did that a couple of times, and finally they said they created a job for me so I could write for them. And uh, after a while, uh, they became aware of my film background and started letting me do an occasional review from time to time. And uh, they just let me review more and more until I got the position that I'm at today. So starting off probably in a school newspaper, either high school or college, is a, is a good way to go. Right. Probably one of the few ways, I would think. Right. What about opportunities to advance in this? I mean, what's the chance of becoming... Uh, Siskel and Ebert or someone like um, that. It's, it's very slim. The, the film industry is very competitive on all levels. And uh, I got in by luck, I think. Uh, persistence a lot had a lot to do with it, but luck had a lot to do with it as well. I had, I had another question for you. Uh, I was curious, and this is in relation to what's happening right now. Have you ever had a situation where somebody has called you up at Creative Loafing and said, well, we don't like your film review, or we don't like uh, what you said about uh, such and such? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, be, doing, being a film critic, is very subjective. Uh, it's all your opinions and how well you substantiate them. The things that people call about most of the time are really strange. You can say you loved a movie and they don't disagree with that. What you'll do is you'll say he was driving, the main actor was driving a blue car and somebody will call and they're really angry. They'll say it was Aquamarine. <laughs> and they're really, they're really furious. All right, well, speaking okay. of phone calls, we've we got, got a phone we call got for the right guests. Here. Go ahead, call her on the air. I just want to call and see. I was curious when Steve didn't mention Field of Dreams in his list of um, his favorite baseball movies, and I wanted to see what um, Rob's place of his favorite baseball movies were. Rob, they're asking you your favorite three. <laughs> Clip them off really quick. Well, let me say that I did not care for Field of Dreams one bit. Neither did I. Hated I hated it when I saw it and hated it the second time. Uh, I think the movie, that movie pretty much had a lot to do with spirituality, which I didn't think it, it successfully tapped into, but it, it really did uh, cause positive reactions in a lot of people. So uh, that was not mine. Eight Men Out was great. John Sayles, I think, is a great filmmaker. Uh, Bad News Bears, I thought was really funny. I can't remember. So I, I loved The League of Their Own. I thought that was a great film. All right, thanks, thanks for calling. Okay. Let me get a, a, a question here about your philosophy on film. I know a lot of critics will look at a movie and say what they feel about it. Like, a lot of critics try to be a little highbrow and say, this is a great movie. And then a lot of people that go to see the film come back and say, what in the world did I just go see? This critic told me this was great, this was horrible. Right. Do you think that the critics should more incorporate in the type of people that would like it, maybe other movies that if you like this, you should see this, uh, Ex et cetera, et cetera? Exactly. I think, um, I, I, as, you would, as you were doing with the baseball movies, you were setting up criteria to judge it by the underdog, the story, whatever. Whenever you're criticizing a movie, you set up criteria. There's different types of criticism. There's genre criticism where you talk about how a film fits into a certain uh, category of films. For example, if you're talking about Westerns, you might cite High Noon as the, as the pure Western and then talk about how the current film right. you're reviewing fits into that mold. Or you can talk about auteur criticism where you uh, discuss the filmmaker, the director's whole body of work and how it fits into that. Uh, you just have to set up criteria. I like to set up a sort of pop culture criteria where uh, you tie it into what 
people's tastes are yeah. and what uh, they are. And in I don't other words, it's, it's like if, it's, if it's an action movie, you, you would tell people, look, if you're looking for intellectual, don't bother going to this. Right, I mean, you don't, well, I mean, you don't review American tick box for like a Citizen Kane. You know? But well, a, lot of, a lot of people do. They, they go to right. a movie and say this is bad, and I don't know what people, like for instance, Rambo, the original uh, Rambo First Blood 2. Some people might say it's a bad movie, but, you know, if you're going it for... It just depends. You know, if you're going for... Uh, intellectual stimulation, obviously. Right, you not. qualify that. You say yeah. Sylvester Stallone has maybe three words in the movie, but the action you like action. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and take the phone call. call. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. Hello? Uh, I guess we like. Okay. Well, I didn't want to wait around. I wanted to add to what you had to say about, about uh, criticism and such. A reviewer, a local reviewer in town, got in big trouble with the uh, viewing audience when uh, she reviewed uh, Back to the Future. And said it was just a, a an awful film. Don't bother to go see it and whatever else. And basically, uh, she apologized and said, "Listen, this is the way you base your reviews on on what I think. You, you don't have to go see it if you don't want to. If you think that I love it and you don't want to go see it because I love it, or if you don't want to go see it, you want to go see it because I hate it, that's fine. As long as you can base your reviews on that." And I was wondering how you felt about uh, that. Have you ever had anybody that that uh, has said to you, well, listen, I, I thought that you, you must have hated that film, but I based my opinion on it. Right. Well, I don't know. I, think, I don't think it's a film reviewer's place to say that a film's great, good or bad necessarily. I think you set up certain parameters and say, you know, as far as ac action sequences go, I thought they were believable. I thought they were exciting. As far as the story goes, I thought it was exciting. I didn't anticipate the ending. But um, if, if you're just saying uh, subjectively this is a horrible movie and people respond to different stimuli than you do, then I don't think you're a very credible reporter. Also, we'd like to, we'd yeah, like to know what quick. you thought of uh, the Glenn films Gary, that Glenn we Ross and Mr. Baseball. Really quick. Well, uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, I thought was great. Uh, it, it didn't have much of a story per se, but the dialogue was like, was, was an art form. I thought it was like a ballet pacing and everything yeah. else. Uh, Mr. Baseball, I haven't seen. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, that's all the time we've got, and we'd like to remind you all to be with the, back with us next week at 10 p.m. here on Cable Channel 12, when we'll be reviewing, what were we doing? Who knows? Uh, maybe, maybe 1492, the and The Public, Public Eye, Eye, and uh, maybe Zebrahead. And we'll be having a special guest that is a prop maker. And that's next week here on Cable Channel 12 on Film Forum.